very glad to know you're still with us. Joining us for the first time this evening is political analyst Shegu Sopiton. Thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay, just before you came in, I was talking with one of my colleagues on the president's yeah. new comment, or should I say instruction to police officers to find a way not to harass young Nigerians who look prosperous and hold a laptop are uh, in a public transport or on a motorcycle for um, any reason. Is this caution enough or do we see more action? Um, it's certainly not enough. Um, and I say it's not enough not because he's right. You know, it, it, they need to be cautioned, right? But I can say what he said. You know, I can do as the chairman board of trustees of Act Network. I can do a statement, or my organization can do a statement and say, police, stop harassing people, or whatever. That will be fine, you know. So it will be um, um, advocacy, pressure. The president can't be saying that. <laughs> he is the president. Okay, before we continue this conversation on what the president <laughs> is saying yeah. or not saying, what yeah. is your take about this three-day retreat for police officers is holding currently in mm -hmm. Lagos? Do you see much output from the time they will be spending away from their post to acquire more advanced skills? No, I'm sorry. Um, absolutely nothing. I'm sorry, I mean, it's, um, we've, had, we've had talk shops like this forever. It's not the first one. It won't be the last one. So that, that's not what we need. Um, the problems are fundamental. The problems with the police force are fundamental. So it's not about sitting down in some nicely air-conditioned room and having a chit chat amongst the people that are the problem. Because we've got to understand that, you know, you are the problem. And you can't, I can't be the cause of a problem and be the one to fix it. It's very, very unlikely to happen because they're benefiting from the rot and from the decay in the system. So they're not going to be the ones to come up with the ideas to fix it. So even if I, as, uh, um, um, as an advocacy person, goes there and gives them um, ideas on what to do and all that, will they do it of their own volition? It's very unlikely. But who will do this? These are people who already know the system. Isn't it possible mm -hmm. that these same set of people can be reoriented, just as this retreat is aiming to do, mm -hmm. um, rewire their minds to be a bit more um, invested in the Nigerian people and in the Nigerian security? Every human being is driven by um, self-interest. Ultimately, it's about what's in it for me, right? So um, as long as the benefit to the individuals we're talking about um, for maintaining the situation as it is far outweigh the benefits or the consequences for stopping and becoming better, then they will continue the way they're doing, that, you know, that, that they're going right now. So um, it's, it's all about the benefits. I, I think the, the, the benefits, I mean, look, we, this, we know the stories, the amount of money that passes through the chain in these systems um, is mind boggling. So I, I don't think anybody will, any sane person will just willingly let go of those personal benefits just for some altruistic, um, you know, just being nice and the world needs to be a better place. <laughs> it's not going to happen. All right. we, we will still come back to that yeah. part of the conversation, but let's now switch back to yeah. the comments. Uh, the president was actually represented by the vice president yeah. at that event uh, opening yesterday. And one of the issues he talked about was, you know, using something he called muscular technology, mm -hmm. um, mm. stun guns, yeah. teasers. Mm -hmm. And he said that a lot of money has been expended in getting these materials into yeah. this country. But are we seeing them on the streets with our police officers? Because I personally, I see police officers with AK-47. <laughs> I don't know that, if that's the exact gun, mm -hmm. but that's what I see. Yeah. Big guns with police on the streets. Do you see that yourself? Um, so, so what's happened is um, the, the presidency and the police top hierarchy are trying to um, address issues with soft policing. The fact that um, for what they call lower risk operations, our police is ill-equipped. So low risk operations, for instance, like riot control, crowd control, you don't need guns for those. You don't need AK-47s for those. You don't need grenade launchers. I mean, even tear gas canisters should be the last resort 
when you're dealing with rioting crowds, people that are basically protesting. You know, so if the protest is getting out of hand, you need to take some additional measures. Right now, our police is not equipped. And I'm not talking of training, now, just equipment. So we don't have rubber bullets. We don't have water cannons that can spray either cold or hot water. And we don't have stun guns. You know, so what the vice president is talking about is stun guns. I think it's, it's a recent development. They've just um, started the process. So you won't see it on our police yet. Now, well, but, if you were to give an estimation, mm -hmm. with all the exigencies yeah. of the Nigerian mm -hmm. society, what time frame would you give for us to begin to see our officers without those dangerous looking weapons? Well, I mean, I, I, I would rather not venture into that because I'm not, I'm not a police officer. I'm not an appointed Yeah, 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 but, so, but the money but has been expended, yes, so, as our vice president has yeah, told us. So ordinarily, you know, all things being equal, given our, our public procurement provisions and all that, you know, typically if, if government says, I want to do this today, and they start today, it can't happen earlier than six months, just by virtue of our laws. So if they've just, I think this happened about a month or thereabouts ago, so we'll be looking at early next year. Uh, it would be nice to start seeing our policemen with stun guns for a change instead of, you know, AK-47s, yeah. You, just a weird question that came to my head. Why is it taking so long for things that really are needed to be, I mean, to be in place? We have very obvious security challenges. This is not the first tenor of this government, yeah. and it's taking this long for such equipment to get to, to us. We are not even sure it's going to be on the streets anytime soon. Um, I think the question is, why is it taking us this long to even get to this conversation at all? I mean, the pol Nigerian police force has been in existence for over 60 years. Um, the stone gun technology is not new by any stretch of the imagination. We're talking 10, maybe 15, maybe even 20 years that this has been in use in developed countries. So I think the issue is that in terms of thinking, um, uh, mindset, our governments as a whole, have n they, they, they're, they're not progressive. They're not looking at, they're not deliberate in looking for how to improve the system. So if we had a system that was self-improving and that would consistently question and interrogate itself, to adopt best practices globally and all that, then you would have had this happen 10, 20 years ago. But, you know, so I'm sure this is a brainwave from somebody. Um, obviously, somebody's going to be eating some money as a result I'm, I'm, as well. I'm praying that this brainwave you know. lasts for as long as possible yeah, so, so Nigerians can begin to have we hope um, so. a... Do you see this helping build that um, trust gap? <laughs> between the people and the government? Because this is another charge that the president mm. uh, gave yesterday, that there is a trust <laughs> deficit between the police and the people. Yeah. And how can you help the people if the people don't trust you? Yeah. Um, if you mean, do I see the introduction of this softer you weaponry. Know, weaponry and all that uh, building the trust deficit? I say absolutely not. Um, in fact, my fear actually is that, you know the fact that I know that if I pull a trigger, on somebody because he doesn't want to give me 100 naira or 200 naira, that he will die and there will be consequences. It's a deterrence in itself for you know, extrajudicial killings. And so usually what happens is the guys that eventually do kill people in such manners are either intoxicated, you know, or there's, there's usually some extraneous factor pushing them. Now, if the average policeman knows that if I pull this trigger, this guy won't die. Uh, um, so we've got to be careful. Yeah, that, that, that's <laughs> an intriguing thought. Yes, because um, it's not just about giving them these guns, these stun guns and all of it. It's about training. There, there's a mindset that goes along with soft policing, with you know, dealing with members of the public on less um, hard, harder crime situations. Um, there's a mindset that goes with that. And our officers just simply don't have it. So if you're giving them these guns, you also need to take them through a complete and thorough training process on handling rules of engagement you know, in these less threatening situations. They don't have it. So you give them stone guns, it's more likely that they'll use it on the downfall driver <laughs> for resisting, you know. What more can the, you know. To the, can the police do in this instance? Because it, it is a big big problem, in my yeah, opinion, and a is. lot of Nigerians will agree with me, that the, the police 
must do something. What is this thing that they must do? Because they seem to be trying to, you know, do some publicity and all of yeah. that. But it's not because it's not effective at all. The new IG has been, you know, he's done some nice things, some, you know, um, nice looking stuff. But I've always said that the, the Nigerian police has fundamental foundational problems. The problems will not be addressed by this piecemeal introduction of uh, new measures, some new policy, you know, and all that. We've got to take this from the very root, you know. So, I mean, I have some very drastic ideas and I don't think, I'm not sure that even that will work. So, but I, but I know that you need to take this system down. Put, put the ideas down. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's you've, you've got to, so, so the point is, we have fantastic police officers within the force. Fantastic, I know quite a number of them that are extremely dedicated, very intelligent, you know, they, they, they're committed to Nigeria and to their job. But there are very few, right? The majority, the vast majority that you and I are likely to interact with, whether you go to a police station or you run into them on the road at an illegal checkpoint, are, are bad eggs. Can right? they be weeded out? So exactly. So for me, the solution is to be brave and weed them out, even if it means weeding out 70% of the force and keeping the 30% and then recruiting and making sure that your selection and recruitment process is now more, um, more cerebral, more thorough and um, more selective to ensure that you don't bring in, you know, funny characters into a group that is meant to keep the law. So I, for me, it's got to be something that fundamental. The, the exact workings can be, can be you know, discussed and, and worked out. I, I, I want to pick your brain. Okay, the question I just pulling over. I want to pick your brain on uh, the comments that he made. You even referred yeah. to it that we have very well trained Nigerian um, uh, police officers. Absolutely. And from what the president said, they've been all over Africa, mm -hmm. even in other parts that mm -hmm. are not Africa, mm -hmm. and they've performed very well. Yep. Why is it? that those successes, what is stopping those successes from being replicated, replicated rather, in this country? Why are those crop of police officers not retained in this country for effective policing? It's, the reason is actually um, so simple that it's almost ridiculous. Um, it's consequence, it's consequence management. So that's why I say the president is not a motivational speaker. Um, he's, not, he's not a preacher. He shouldn't be saying to the police, um, do not harass innocent public um, members of the public or innocent citizens. Just focus on the Yahoo voice. He shouldn't be saying that to them. He shouldn't be preaching it. He should simply ensure that a system is in place that will punish the police officers that go outside of the bounds of the law in doing their job. Right now, what happens is that they you know, not just the police, in the whole society as a whole, there, there is no consequence for bad behavior. It's one of our most fundamental problems. So within the police force, you kill, how many times have we seen a policeman go to jail or to the gallows for killing someone extrajudicially? Usually what happens is that you hear that he's been either transferred or yes, he was, he's fired, he's taken to court, you know the case is in court, but you never quite hear the end of it. You know, it's, I can't actually put my fingers on one or two no, or three No, there have cases. been instances I know, where you were dismissed I know. outright. But that's the point, you know. So I get dismissed for killing someone. Hello? Someone's dead. So the least that should happen is that I should be incarcerated. So how many times have we seen police officers incarcerated for bad behavior? Very few. Until we fix that, you know, it's going to continue. Thank you very <laughs> much, as always, for sharing your thoughts with Thank us. You. Right, we'll go on a short break. And when we come back, we'll be talking about Nigerian governors. Some seem to be on a different page with the federal government as regards the minimum wage agreement. Stay with us.